benefits don't fade. People's mind tells them they fade, but there's a couple of reasons for this. <clears throat> First thing is we, we get used to everything. We can get accustomed to everything. Now, at the beginning, when we stop doing something, the contrast is really strong. It's like people that have had some kind of spiritual experience or something. Let's say they, they've just been <clears throat> hating life for a while and depressed and restless. And then all of a sudden God gave them some kind of boom, some good karma got expiated. And all of a sudden you're like, actually felt what it felt like to be peaceful. Or those that have done plant medicine, sometimes plant medicine does that. It stills your mind and you come to realize like who you really are, your natural state without all the mind chatter. So then the people are like, oh my God, like I'm, I'm enlightened, I'm awakened now. Start trying to be a messiah. But that actually, <clears throat> that's, we start to get accustomed to that and we're, we're more sober about it. It becomes, it's not that we don't enjoy it, but it's not such a big deal anymore, okay? So that relates a little bit to the semen retention. If somebody's been doing PMO, you know, for years, like every day, and then you stop that, you're gonna start to feel a more sense of balance. <clears throat> you're gonna feel more willpower. You're gonna notice your face in the mirror looks better, okay? But then after some time, I don't know how long, depends on the people, at some point, the mind, the ego is gonna come back in. That's its job. And it wants to start saying, you know, you got this now, man. You're cool. You can you can go dabble a little bit now and go do those things you used to you used to do and stop doing because you're good now. And besides, it's like not you need some excitement. This uh <clears throat> this semen retention streak, it's getting a little boring now. I might be missing out. I need to go, you know, be a man and you see, this is the thinking that starts. And then some people uh they succumb to that. I used to too. Like this is part of the process. <laughs> like what are you get <coughs> what are you gonna do? You gotta go through this, you know. So but what what it is is you start to get used to it. It's not like semen retention's the final aim in life. It's not like that's the elixir that's gonna give you everlasting peace. Semen retention's a tool. It it's a prerequisite requisite for create, creating a conducive environment so that then you can start contemplating on your real nature. That's why I made a spiritual channel, spiritual renaissance. That's, that's the highest. These other things that I share on, these other two channels, like this is the semen retention channel and then my other true health channel, these are tips and tools and stuff that can help purify the mind and, and give a sense of balance in the body emotions and everything so that then actually a spiritual practice will be beneficial and efficient you can't you can't just and people try to do this you can't just skip everything keep all your your stupid habits and ways of living and then just say okay I'm just gonna I'm just gonna meditate now and you know I'm gonna read the Bible or something and all is good no it don't work those the energy the potency in those words <clears throat> spiritual teachings or, or scriptures, they're not gonna land inside and detonate. Not if I don't, I'm not living a, a, a lifestyle and not balanced to a certain degree where I can absorb the higher energy in these pointings that you find in, in spiritual teachings and all that. That's why I'm a proponent of both. And so I make channels on all of it. The tools, the practical level, and then the spiritual level. And then it has the best, um, that's the best way to the, the, the highest percent of it, of, of your spiritual practice actually working. So we gotta, we gotta pay a little attention to the body mind. After a while, you realize like semen retention's not enough, but semen retention opens your, your consciousness and expands it to the point that you wanna see like, okay, what else is there? Consciousness wants to keep expanding. The highest is when you recognize your true nature, which is, you can say, a sense of presence. It's hard to use words to describe our true nature because our true nature is beyond words. Okay, but we're trying to point to something here. And that's what any authentic religion or spiritual practice does. It tries to point you into this realization that a few beings have come into. So this is what we're doing, pointing to that. 
So semen retention starts to wake up these natural inborn tendencies that everybody has, but most aren't aware of it, starts to wake those tendencies up and, and you start to question things and introspect and be like, what's this life about? Am I really this body? Is my, my life just about trying to get attention from the opposite sex and try to make money? And something starts contemplating that because something you get bored of it. It's my life just about getting dopamine hits all the time and all this excitement and something gets tired of the roller coaster. Oh, I'm excited, oh no, 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 I'm bored now. Oh, I'm excited, oh, I'm bored now. Wow, I made a million dollars. Now I'm really good. After a few months, well, this is a lot of stress. What the hell am I gonna do with all this money? The mind gets busy. So something at some point, semen retention helps to facilitate this, something your higher nature starts to wake up okay and then you want more so if you don't listen to that if you just stay in this material type existence and you're doing semen retention at some point you're gonna feel like this is not enough so it's not like the benefits have faded it's that it's time to go to the next level <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say that's the point I'm trying to make in that long-winded explanation it's time to go to the next level it's time to expand go deeper Okay? So then if you don't do that, <clears throat> something might get a little bored seemingly. The mind starts, you know, where are the benefits I felt when I first started? Man, that was strong. Yeah, they're still there. They're just not so strong anymore. You're more sober about it. You've gotten used to it. You know? So this, we're trying to point out these things so that when they happen, you, <clears throat> you like understand what's going on. That's the point of these videos. So maybe that can help accelerate the evolution. Maybe you don't need a few years to figure it out. Like I'm telling you now what's happening. Now, who can assimilate that and actually see that? That's another story. That's another, you know, we don't know. It's about evolution. Some people are really ready. Others, they kind of want to play a little while. That's cool. I did that. I'm a master at that. Playing. I, I do something that I know wasn't the best for me. I do that to the extreme until like, I'm nauseated by it. So I understand that. The other thing that can happen is it's like <clears throat> the habit, the PMO habit, you stop that, but the tendency to try to use something externally to make you feel good, that habit's still alive. So then you get into what you can call like habit transference or something. You'll start doing other things. Maybe you'll start being like obsessed with making money or you'll start edging. That's what I did when I stopped this, when I started, uh, when I stopped the PMO, started preserving my semen, I did that like in my, you know, I mean, I started as a late teenager and just early 20s, I really started doing it. But the, the edging just became off the chart that it got worse. I made a video why, why some, um, when you start semen retention, your edging can, can, can get a lot worse. It's another level because it's like I hadn't transcended the habit of trying to use things to give me a dopamine hit and sense of euphoria. Because emotionally, I would still have times when I would be kind of down, and then my mind's like, well, go do this, you'll feel better. Look at something on the internet, don't masturbate, don't do that, just look at it. Because you can get a dopamine hit just looking at stuff. So check yourself, introspect, and see, are you doing that? Are you using, are you trying to, <clears throat> put yourself in certain situations, environment, around certain people, looking at certain things, having certain stimulating conversations, eating uh, certain stimulating foods. Some people, they go from being a sex addict to being an eating addict. It's transfer stuff, or they start getting high more. Or, you know. So what are you doing? Look at your life and see, since you've been on this streak, have you transferred this uh, <clears throat> addiction and this obsession to try to get a hit? Have you transferred that into another form, another vehicle? Because then we're still hitting the dopamine box. That means we're still doing drugs. That means these drugs, dopamine, is gonna start to burn your nervous system out after a while. Now, if you're 20 and you say you don't feel any effects, yeah, I know, because <laughs> some are like, man, I. I do this and I don't feel any problem. Yeah, I didn't either. That's why I kept doing it. But, you know, be sensitive and feel like, is it taking a toll on your nervous system and body? God's worked it out. When we're young, 
the body's more resilient. We can kind of do debauch debaucherous stuff and bad habits and, you know, like I used to get high and eat junk and stay up all night and the next day I was still cool. I can't do that now. I <laughs> said, like, that's, I burn myself out doing that. So after some years, or maybe decades, depends how strong your <clears throat> genes are, at some point you are going to, you, you can't get away with what you used to do. Now that's a blessing too, because then you can look at, you can start to, you have some inner guidance now how to shape your life in the most conducive, positive way possible. You don't need to hear anymore from videos what to do. You know what to do, because you can feel it. You're like, whoa, when I do this, uh, I don't think that's healthy for me. It actually makes my mood worse and I feel more imbalanced and I'm not, um, I'm not centered and so you start looking at all that when there's consequences it's more easy to change so I'm telling you ahead of time if if we're obsessed with dopamine and getting that fix and hit at some point that will burn your nervous system out and it'll create some consequences mental emotional physical so if somebody like let's say they're not doing that when when they first start the semen retention they're not edging, they're not doing semen retention, they're not doing anything. And you start to really start to feel these benefits. But then later, like I said, the mind is gonna, the addict mind is still looking for the fix. So then you're gonna start doing things to get that fix. And then you're gonna say, well, I don't really feel the benefits as much anymore. Yeah, because doing the addict behavior is nullifying the benefits. That's why. It's still better than not, like, you don't wanna, it's not an all or nothing thing. Well, oh, I'm still acting out, I'm still edging, so I might as well go do PMO. No, that's a mind trick. Don't fall for that. You gotta work this thing. It's an evolutionary thing, and you just keep trying. But that's why the benefits will also feel like they're fading, because, like, we're still being an addict. When we do addict stuff, it's like there's a, there's a heavier, darker energy with that. So then the lighter energy, the pure, the pure energy that we're feeling from our good habits, when we're doing the bad habits, it kind of decreases that. It's like our bank account of, of energy that we're getting from good habits is up, but then we start increasing the, <clears throat> we, we start taking withdrawals out to go do the negative stuff. So then the bank account starts to go down. Then we're like, whoa, why don't I feel the benefits? That's why. At the same time, don't beat yourself up if you're doing it. That's also not the, the, the answer. You, you, you gotta ride this as a very, it's like a tightrope, you know? You just gotta be chill. <laughs> you gotta do the best you can, but at the same time, give yourself space because you're a human being that's in evolution. There's no master that never went through this same stuff. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, they all had to go through this at some lifetime. And then when they incarnated in the present life, they kind of already did that work, and so it was more easy for them just to kind of wake up to the true nature. Same with Eckhart Tolle and a lot of them. I think I'm getting into my spiritual channel now. So if you want to see the spiritual stuff, go watch Spiritual Renaissance. But if this channel is sufficient for you right now, because this is the stage, then you just watch this channel. And you can watch the True Health channel that um, I deal, I talk more about practical things, how to help the nervous system. We gotta find our food. I got three channels and they each kinda have their own food. So you find which channel that you get fed at and then you go watch that <laughs> and you do that. And if there's other channels that you like, you go watch that too. But just discern, what am I doing? Is it helping me feel good? Is it making my appetite, this inner appetite for, for balance and peace, is it helping with that? What I'm watching, who I'm talking to, environment, what I'm eating, is that helping to contribute to this deep yearning to come into a sense of balance? That's your introspection, you keep doing that. You don't have to be spiritual to do that, that's just common sense. Although a lot of people don't have enough common sense to do that. Or we lie to ourselves, we're like, nah, I'm cool. Yeah, I'm gonna go and uh, go to the club or the rave party, it's fun. Yeah, I'm gonna mat girls and do all that. You know what, at a point it is fun for a while. I did that too when I was younger. At some point, it's not fun anymore. So introspect and see, is it still fun? If it's still fun, you're gonna go do it anyway. That's cool, and there's no judgment. But if, if it's not fun anymore, but yet you're still doing it, okay, now you gotta check yourself. Something inside's like, I'm done with this stupid habit, but yet I'm still, I keep doing it. Okay, now those people, <clears throat> uh, we can look at that, and you can see, like, do I really, you know, why do I keep doing that? Yeah. If you want more individual attention, you can uh, send me an email. I do private consultations. I want to have a group 
at some point because it's better you get everybody in the same room like a zoom group or something some zoom satsang that's in the works in the future it's just right now i'm you know it's only so much time in a day and everything because if i get burned out then i can't drop drop science you know you want me to drop science right all right <laughs> i'll see you